Now, the Iraqi uh, story of what's happening now is different than the story that we hear in the US. It's a different story. Iraqis don't believe that what's happening now is a religious or sectarian conflict based on ancient hatred. This is what the media has been saying for the last five years. They say they are killing each other because they are crazy Muslims who just enjoy blowing themselves up. It's in their DNA. It's not, it has nothing to do with us. And they've been blowing themselves up for 1400 years. It not, has nothing to do with us going there. In fact, we are going there to, to uh, protect them from each other. Now, the Iraqis don't believe this. They don't believe this because of many reasons. And they don't believe this not only because many Iraqis are, like myself, half Sunni and half Shiite. You know, I have one of my parents who is a Sunni and the other who is a Shiite. Not only because the majority of the Iraqi tribes have both Sunni and Shiite uh, branches, but also because Iraqis know as a fact that Iraq never had a religious or sectarian conflict in its history. It's actually a unique case to the Muslim and Arab world in the sense that there are some other Sunnis and Shiites who had conflict in Lebanon and Saudi Arabia and Pakistan or elsewhere. Iraq has been the exception to any sectarian or religious conflict in the past. And more importantly, Iraq is still an exception for such a conflict. Now, let me explain what's the major difference between what Iraqis think about the roots of conflict and what the U.S. mainstream media and mainstream politicians think about the roots. In the U.S., all of us know that uh, the major understanding is that there is a sectarian conflict or a religious conflict, and the U.S. there is doing uh, this, uh, like, what do you call it, a uh, humanitarian mission, uh, peace, peacekeeping force that is keeping people from fighting against each other. The Iraqis actually believe that what's happening now is a foreign occupation. It's very similar to many other foreign occupations that happened in the past. And this foreign occupation is putting some Iraqis against other Iraqis because of political and economic reasons, not because of um, religious or sectarian or ethnic ones. So uh, from the Iraqi understanding, uh, the vast majority of Iraqis think that what's happening now is a civil conflict between some Sunnis and Shiites and Kurds and Christians and seculars who are allied with the U.S. against other Sunnis and Shiites and seculars and Kurds and Christians who are against the occupation. So it's not, it's not a sectarian conflict. It's more uh, political and it has, of course, economical uh, implications. Now, let me give you an example, just to, like, a, maybe an example that is closer to a U.S. audience. What would we say if a foreigner or someone came from outside the U.S. and said the American Civil War was a religious civil war between the Catholics and the Protestants? People would say, you're wrong. You, know, you don't know what you're talking about. And this is not an opinion that we disagree with, right? Just wrong facts. If someone said, in the American Civil War, there, were, there, were, there was a, a war, a racial war, between the whites on one side and the blacks on the other. I would say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, because there were white people on the both, on both sides. It was way you know, different. Now, I feel I have the same feeling when people say that the conflict in Iraq now is between the Sunnis and the Shiites. What does that mean? What does the Sunnis mean to start with? It's like saying, in the U.S. context, it's like saying, what do you think the white people think about immigration? But which white people, you know? <laughs> Bill O'Reilly or, I don't know. Like, like there is no one group called white people that meets with the headquarters. Right? <laughs> so in the same in Iraq, the, the, there is no one group called the Sunnis or the Shiites. There are Shiites who are pro-occupation, there are Shiites who are against occupation. There are Sunnis who are for occupation, there are seculars who are pro occupation. <coughs> and it's not like Sunnis live together and Shiites live together. People live in the same neighborhoods, they intermarry. 
So it's way different. The, the understanding of the conflict is completely different. Now let me give you an example about how does this theory look in, in reality, in practice, how does this uh, political and economic split demonstrate itself uh, in reality. Um, <clears throat> Iraq had uh, elections in 2005, and uh, I'm sure many of you remember the purple fingers in uh, Iraqi voting. Uh, I was one of the people with purple fingers who voted in 2005. I actually voted from, from the US. I used to live in California at that time. Now, what the majority of the US public don't know is that um, Iraqis voted for the parliament. Because Iraq is a parliamentary, has a parliamentary system. So, um, unlike the US, Iraqis just vote for the parliament, and then the parliament creates the other two branches of the government. People vote for the legislative branch, and then the legislative branch creates the executive and judicial branch. In the US, people vote for the legislative branch and the, for the House and Senate. They supposedly vote for the president, and they vote for the even judicial branch in the local elections. Uh, like in the small now, in Iraq, what happened is that the, the elections, the only elections that happened, led to the uh, victory of the Sunnis and Shiites and, and uh, seculars and Kurds and Turkmen and others who tend to be uh, more nationalist and against the occupation. So the Iraqi parliament, the only elected body in the Iraqi government, is led by a majority of Sunnis and Shiites and Christians and seculars and Turkmen and Mandaeans and others who are against the occupation. They want the U.S. to leave completely without leaving any permanent base. They want to keep Iraq united with one central government. They are against partitioning Iraq uh, into smaller regions. Uh, Kurdistan, and the Sunnistan, and the Shia stand, Christian stand, <laughs> like all of these different regions. And they are against privatizing Iraq's natural resources. Now, parties that lost the elections, five parties, who are, the two of them are Shiites, and two are Kurds, and one is Sunni, they control the minority of the parliament. Those five parties uh, who are the Bush administration allies. They believe in partitioning Iraq to uh, regional, uh, like small regions that has no strong central government. They want the U.S. to stay indefinitely in Iraq and continue its uh, role in Iraq. And they want to privatize Iraq's natural resources, gas and, and oil. Now these five parties that lost the elections are actually the same five parties that met with the Bush administration in 2002. When, when the Bush administration was preparing for the invasion in 2002, there was a public conference in London called the uh, London Conference, they called it, like the opposition conference in London. And these five parties went there. Now, just to show how destructive uh, the US intervention in Iraq is, these five parties who are allied with the Bush administration are running the country exclusively now despite the fact that they lost the elections. They lost the only elections. So I mean, despite that little small detail <laughs> that they lost the elections, the US uh, government ended up pushing them and supporting them to run the executive branch exclusively without any participation from the parties that are running the uh, majority of the parliament. 